when you think about all things sustainable, uh, you usually don't think about a giant gas guzzling home on wheels. <laughs> but uh, that's except the one that is owned by Ty Adams. When Ty considered uh, the RV, he wasn't thinking why, uh, he was thinking why not. Back in 2006, he sold his house, he quit his desk job, he bought a motorhome and started promoting biodiesel. The idea evolved into what today he calls Soul Trekker, and our Anne Reese dropped in on Ty and the Trekker to give us an up close and personal look. the Soul Trekker. This RV, according to its co-designer Ty Adams, may be the most eco-friendly motorhome in the universe, so we've come to Northeast Portland to ask Ty to explain. Hey Ann. Hi, welcome to Sustainable Today. Thanks. You want to come inside? Thanks for having us. So welcome inside. Wow, nice. Thanks, yeah. So you claim you have the world's most eco-friendly RV. Would you say this is true? I, I think it's true. I mean, I, it's hard to say because I haven't seen every RV in the world. The reason that we say that is because we can run this without any fossil fuels at all. Um, and that was the whole point of, of what we did with this rebuild was to take a vehicle and this old gas guzzling RV um, that had, you know, was covered in vinyl and had, had a lot of um, kind of nasty materials in it from an, eco an ecological standpoint and take those out and retrofit it with more environmentally friendly um, materials and then um, retrofit all the systems so that we could run them on renewable energy. So we've got solar electric panels so that we can run all of the electrical systems inside the house off of the sun. Um, and then we've got solar hot water so we have like hot sink water, or hot shower water. Um, we can go about three or four days without any, without any sun at all. So you mentioned vinyl. Right. And it appears to be very, very toxic. Can you give me a little information about the toxicity? Of course, yeah, and I appreciate getting called out. So if you're going to talk about something that takes a lot of fossil fuels to manufacture and a lot of petroleum go goes into it, then the plastics industry is a huge, is a huge issue. Vinyl is one that um, is made with tons of petroleum and also a lot of um, formaldehyde goes into vinyl and that's what off gases from some, some, for some, from some vinyls um, for a considerable amount of time. So I don't necessarily want to be, you know, sleeping in an environment that has formaldehyde fumes kind of coming off and in small quantities for sure. But over the, the lifetime of your exposure, um, there's there's some research that that um, is pointing to cancer, you know, the cancer causing effects of being exposed to low level formaldehyde for a long period of time. Uh, we've got a bamboo floor here, so we're, we're pretty much wrapped in bamboo um, right now. Eventually, we'd like to experiment with some cork flooring. Um, which is, yeah, this yeah. is what this is right now. We're, we're using this as a temporary until we get our um, recycled glass tile and we're gonna do a little glass tile backsplash. So um, that just shows the cork. Cork is a really cool material, actually. The trees don't need to be chopped down to harvest it. Um, they just peel the bark off every couple of years so that the same tree can, can yield just tons of cork. So this really cool countertop um, we, we just had installed and it's from a company here in Portland called Fuse and it's um, like 80% recycled material. Um, this is actually recycled curbside recycled glass inside there. Um, so they, they add um, concrete fly ash and then they add this glass to it and then they cut it and polish it and it looks beautiful and it's just really durable, really great surface so we're excited about that. And, Where's um, the compost action happening? So the compost actually happens back there, underneath, inside the toilet. And then you see how there's a hinge back there? Oh, yeah. If you're really excited about the, the waste issue, here's, here we go. So when there's actually waste in there, then we turn the vent on, and that keeps the odors out of here completely. And then if you want to speed up the composting process, this is the heater underneath there. Um, that will cause a little bit of odor. That's the reason that I'd like, I would ideally love to have the composting tray below deck so that it would get rid of any odor and you could have the heater on all the time. Um, and then when the compost is finished, we just like just lift this guy up here. You take that bag out of there um, with the, the compost after it's full and let it finish for a couple weeks and you're good to go. So this is where the liquid waste goes, right? Um, this goes down to a tank below and if you're really hardcore, you could add like eight parts water and you'd have a nice little fertilizer there that you can put on your plants, no problem. If you're not as hardcore, you can, you know, just put it down a regular sewage drain or dispose of it like you'd dispose of. Um, uh, you know, of a regular RV waste. 
Along the top there, you can see we've got a, a gutter running from the front to the back, a stainless steel gutter, and that's our rainwater catchment system. There's another one on the other side. So when it does rain, it runs off both sides and water runs inside and down into our, our tank storage on either side. We've been getting about 75, 80 gallons off that roof. We just use it for shower and sink and stuff, um, nothing potable. So this is the, the solar hot water heater. We actually, this is a five gallon brewery syrup tank that we, that we found a new life for as a hot water heater. So we converted that brewery tank into a hot water heater. And this is the pump unit for the solar hot water. So that antifreeze comes down through this pump and then into the hot water tank and then into our heat exchanger and then back up to the roof there. Um, we've got a little uh, thermostat that will control, that will control the, the whole system for us kind of automatically. What you got up front here? Uh, well, up front we actually have the engine. It's a 1993 engine that has 8,000 miles on it and we can run biodiesel in it and have run biodiesel in it 100% um, with no issues at all. We thought originally that we would go to veggie oil you know, right off the bat, um, but as things have changed, we've, we've been kicking that around more and more because pretty much every restaurant in, in most areas where there's any sort of biodiesel industry or any sort of vegetable oil, the restaurants are starting to get savvy to, hey, we've got a valuable commodity here. We shouldn't just be giving, giving it away. And a lot of the grease renderers too, who make money off that have clamped down and um, they, they don't want people taking, that's their commodity, they're paying for it. So it's theft to them. What inspired you to start in the first place? I got a job at an RV manufacturer manufacturer called Monaco. They had these travel magazines and I became the editor of their travel magazine. So I kind of, you know, by necessity had to like open my mind a little bit to the RVing world. And, and I thought, well, man, like here's an opportunity look like that has been completely unexplored to, to maybe make motorhomes um, in a green way. And I did this crazy project called Biotrekker for a couple years where I just traveled around the, the country as a freelance journalist writing about using 100% biodiesel. Um, and then started doing school tours and people started getting interested and um, then that kind of evolved into Soul Trekker and we decided that hey since we're already doing education me and a couple friends like why don't we why don't we make it a nonprofit since that's pretty much what it is already and so we did that and last year we became a 501c3 and now our, our main mission in life is sustainability education rather than having um, 20 school buses go see a technology display, we can actually bring that to them and we can do it without um, any fossil fuels. We're really excited to just be able to come to schools and say, you know, here's a low emissions way to show kids kind of what sustainability is and some practical applications and, um, and the kids have responded really amazingly well. They get it. Um, kids see the positives right off the bat, man. Um, adults, RV shows, you have to convince adults. You really do. Um, they see all, they, they want to know everything that could go wrong, everything that has gone wrong first before that they'll be convinced that it's a good way to go. Um, we're getting really close to, I would say, complete self-sufficiency on a small scale. And then that can be replicated on a, on a neighborhood-wide scale. And that can be replicated on a city-wide scale. And that's sustainable. Like, self-sufficiency is sustainability. Thanks, Ty, for showing us the Soul Trek. Thank you, Anne. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you on tour. Yeah, we'll see you out on the road. This is Ann Reese bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. Well, Ty and his group are not stopping with the RV. They plan to collaborate with the Portland uh, Public School District to create the Solar Transition Cafe, a solar-powered food cart specializing in waffles and other dishes that integrate locally sourced fruits and vegetables. So stay tuned for that on a future report.